Hello, welcome to the part two of the chapter Agriculture, class 10, chapter four. So we are supposed to start from sugarcane. We discussed about the rice, wheat, millets, maize. Now we are talking about sugarcane. It is a tropical as well as subtropical region. The tropical region is below the 23 and a half degrees uh, Tropic of Cancer, which is passing through the center of India. Below that region, towards the end of India, the tropical region. Subtropical region is above the Tropic of Cancer to the end of India, that is the Jammu Kashmir, the Gangetic Plain and all. The climatic conditions required for the growth of this crop are hot and humid climate with a temperature ranging between 21 to 27 degrees Celsius and rainfall between 75 centimeters and 100 centimeters. It can be grown in a variety of soils and this requires large amount of manual labor. So this labor is required right from the time of sowing till the harvesting. India is the second largest producer after Brazil. <clears throat> The main source of sugar, jaggery, kandasari, molasses. These are the byproducts of sugarcane. The major sugar producing states are Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, and Haryana. So you can see the image. Coming next is the beverage crop, that is the drink which is obtained from it, that is the tea. This is an example of a plantation crop which is extensively grown on a large area. This is a, a beverage crop which was introduced in India by the British. The tea plant grows well in tropical and subtropical climates endowed or gifted with the deep, fertile and well-drained soil, which is very rich in humus and organic matter. The tea bushes require warm and moist, uh, free climate throughout the year. Tea requires abundant, cheap, skilled labor. This also is labor-intensive crop. Tea is produced within the tea garden to restore its freshness, to keep the smell, the aroma intact. The major tea producing states in India are Assam, Hills of Darjeeling, Jaipalguri districts, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu and Kerala region. India is the leading producer as well as exporter of tea in the world. Coming next is another beverage crop that is the coffee. India produces 4% of the world's coffee. Indian coffee is known in the world for its good quality. The Arabica variety initially brought from Yemen is produced in India. This variety is of great demand in the world. Its cultivation was initially introduced by on the hills of Baba Budan and even today its cultivation is confined or restricted to the Nilgiri hills in Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Those climatic regions are favorable for the cultivation of this crop. Next comes the fruit and vegetable cultivation that is the hearty culture. India is the largest producer of fruits and vegetables in the world. India produces 
uh, in the tropical as well as uh, in the temperate regions these type of fruits are produced the fruits uh, which are in great demand in india which are produced are mangoes of maharashtra andhra pradesh uttar pradesh and west bengal oranges of nagpur and chirapunji bananas of kerala mizoram maharashtra and tamil nadu lychee and guava of uttar pradesh and bihar pineapples of meghalaya grapes of andhra pradesh and maharashtra apples pears apricots and walnuts of jammu and kashmir and himachal pradesh india produces 13% of world's vegetables it is an important producer of green pea that is tomato cauliflower onion cabbage tomato brinjal and potato it accounts to 10% of world's fruit production also coming next plantation crop is the rubber it is an equatorial crop the region of equatorial is from the equator till the tropic of cancer and from the equator till the tropic of capricorn the region from 23 and a half north degree to 23 and a half south degree is called as tropical region or equatorial region this region has abundant rainfall the temperature is also very high so it requires moist humid climate and rainfall of more than 200 cm and temperature around 25 degrees celsius so this region which is favorable with the equatorial crop for its equatorial conditions produce this crop it is the important industrial raw material we know how much this is in demand today it is mainly grown in kerala tamil nadu karnataka andaman and nicobar islands garo hills of meghalaya india ranks fifth among the world's natural rubber producers this is the consumption of natural rubber for all these regions we use rubber have a look next are the fiber crops which give us the garments and uh, these garments uh, crops fiber crops or cotton jute hemp and natural silk are the four major crops fiber crops grown in india the first three are derived from the crops grown in the soil silk is obtained from the natural silk worms cocoons they create the cocoons and these are grown on the mulberry leaves <clears throat> we can see the image of mulberry leaves the rearing of silk and the production of silk fiber is known as the sericulture cotton is believed to be the original home of the plant cotton plant actually manchester was leading cotton producer during the world war 1 when it was producing the cotton and meeting the war requirements that time the indian cotton producing regions ahmedabad which is called as the manchester of india this got more demand and many cotton producing regions in india had a huge demand for this raw material one of the main important raw materials for cotton textile industry india is the largest producer of cotton in the third largest producer of cotton in the world cotton grows well in drier parts of black soil of deccan plateau region that's why the soil is called as black cotton soil 
this requires high temperature light rainfall and remember 210 frost free days if there is frost the balls become damp and unsuitable for making thread so absolutely frost free tents that is 3 210 frost free days bright sunshine which helps the ripening of the crop tariff crop requires nearly 8 to 10 months to mature when this will be ready for the usage the leading producers maharashtra gujarat madhya pradesh karnataka andhra pradesh punjab haryana tamil nadu uttar pradesh are the major cotton producing states now in the field of agriculture many technological and institutional reforms have been brought about agriculture has been practiced in india for several years thousands of years that's why it's called as an age-old practice a primitive occupation sustained or continuous users of land without compatible techno institutional changes have hindered the pace of agricultural development that is without giving a gap for the soil to replenish its nutrients so that will bring back that will bring down the soil nutrients and soil won't be suitable for cultivation so certain reforms are essential in the field of technology and also in certain institutions to supplement the agricultural production in spite of development of source of irrigation most of the farmers in large parts of our country still depend on monsoon on an average only 1.7 hectares of the land is irrigated remaining is dependent on the monsoon so the sources of irrigation have to be developed the most of the farmers in large parts of our country they still depend on monsoon and the natural fertility in order to carry on their agriculture because buying a chemical oriented fertilizers pesticide insecticide is costly they don't have so much of capital investment there are still so many small and marginal farmers in our country Agriculture needs serious technical and institutional reforms and they have been brought about after the Green Revolution in 1965-66, mid-1960s phenomenon. Father of the Green Revolution, Dr. M. S. Swaminathan has introduced the reforms in the field of agriculture. Along with this, the collectivization of the holdings, the consolidation or the combining of the holdings, Pro cooperative farming and abolition of zamindari system the zamindari system which was introduced in order to collect the tax from the uh, landholders that was a severe setback where zamindari mahalwari rayatwari wherein group of people who were predominant in the village they used to collect in the right worry, one single individual who was dominant in the village, he was collecting the tax. These taxes were going to the British, who in turn used it for their own selfish motives, but not to supplement the Indian agricultural productivity. So in the post-independence period, when the first five-year plans came up and the first five-year plan focused on the agriculture, so the fragmentation of land holdings is a big problem that is due to the law of inheritance the land of the father was divided into his uh, all number of sons and so the holdings large piece of land was broken into small small regions so the soil fertility will be lost water availability will be lost nutrients will be lost many many losses are there so fragmentation of land holdings was a severe setback that has to be tackled so reforms were brought about land reforms and land sealing act was brought about so that huge pieces of land huge areas of land are brought into cultivation green revolution was introduced in the field of agriculture in the mid 1960s 70s phenomenon and this father is dr m s swaminathan introduced technological reforms high yielding variety of seeds insecticide pesticides improved irrigation methods storage methods farming techniques 
taking the produce to the market. This was first introduced in Punjab Haryana region, wherein the wheat production multiplied almost into three times. Also in the production of milk, which is called as white revolution, Operation Flood was introduced. This also is a part of uh, agriculture and the field of agriculture. So in few areas, these reforms have been introduced, but the benefits of these institutional and technological reforms have to reach all parts of the country and they have to be given with crop insurance against natural calamities. As we individuals have insurance in the same way, the crops also should be insured. Otherwise, the poor farmer who gives his hard labor, toils hard day and night, has to give up his life if the crop fails. So when crop insurance has started, he is secured after giving his hard labor. So the Grameen banks and other cooperative societies came up by providing loans to the farmers at cheap and affordable rate of interest. Here we should not forget the role of NABAD, National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, which came up in the year 1982, wanted to give the assistance to the farmers in the agriculture and the rural development. Other important provisions are the Kisan credit card. These steps have been taken to give the personal accident insurance scheme for the farmer. These steps have been taken by the government of India for the benefit of the farmers. Apart from this, special weather bulletins are maintained to give the information based on agriculture to the farmer. Radio, television programs are broadcasted so that he is updating from time to time. He knows the soil quality. He knows the climatic conditions. He can test the soil samples. Apart from this, the government announces the minimum support price to the farmers to encourage them to cultivate. Apart from that, remuneration is given and also procurement, the collection of the grains is done from the farmers so that the speculators, the agents and the middlemen do not exploit the farmer who works hard. Other Milestone in the field of agriculture is the Bhudan movement introduced by Ajare Vinoba Bhave, the follower of Gandhiji, who started his march from Kochampali village in Andhra Pradesh. So, Bhudan, Gramadan, these are the two aspects introduced by him, who uh, he encouraged the people who have excess land and asked them to donate it by his. Uh, walk, Pada Yatra, he spread, spread the message how he can uh, give the land to the landless from collection in this way from the people who are rich. He initiated Sri Ramachandra Reddy and uh, offered, this man offered 80 acres of land to 80 landless farmers. This was known as Bhudan. Bhu means Bhumi, the land. Dan is donating, Gram Dan, entire village is to be donated. So in this way, farmers are called, are supplemented and they are supported with their livelihood. This happened without shedding a drop of blood. So this is called as bloodless revolution in India. He revolutionized the field of agriculture by giving assistance to small and marginal farmers. The contribution of agriculture to the national income, employment, uh, and the output, the national economy, the country's economy, how many people are dependent and what is the productivity, we shall see now. Agriculture has been the backbone. Even today, two-thirds of the population are dependent. So if we take our census from 1951 till today, the number of people dependent on the agriculture is decreasing. But the contribution of agriculture to the gross domestic product is not spectacularly increasing. So much of technological institutional changes have to be brought about by encouraging the farmers to adopt new methods and face the global challenges.
establishment of the indian council for agricultural research agricultural universities veterinary services animal breeding centers horticulture development research and development in the field of meteorology and weather forecast have been set up and this gave priority for increasing the agricultural sector so this is the contribution of india the growth of gdp in the major sectors agriculture industry and service sector so when we take the 10th plan 11th plan and the 12th plan period you can see that the contribution is just 1.7 it increased to 3.2 then 4 in the target 1 in the target 2 it is 4.2 whereas in the industry you can see it is growing and in the service sector it is also growing but it is stagnant in the in the 12th plan children if you notice the rich countries the contribution from the secondary and the tertiary sectors it is much much more nearly 90 percent only 10 percent or less than 10 percent is dependent on agriculture so the growth in the agriculture is decelerating means decreasing so the gdp rate is increasing over the years but is not generating sufficient employment opportunities so agricultural universities should train the people children the youngsters like you should come forward in all other sectors which are allied which are related to agriculture may not be directly farming but storage distribution other sectors then employment opportunities can be created apart from this indian farmers are facing big challenge from the international farmers we need to develop our production quality to international uh, quality and we need the investment uh, public investment in agricultural sector the government also should invest uh, big industrialists also should come and invest then only the sector will be growing without agriculture no other sector can flourish because we get the raw material from the agricultural sector the subsidy on the fertilizers is decreased leading to increase in the cost of production so if the government is not giving the support then it will be very difficult and farmers are prone to kill themselves in this way so farmers are withdrawing their invest from uh, investment from agriculture small farmers even sell their land and move to the cities and towns to find any other alternate employment so government is providing food security and uh, availability affordability and accessibility of food to all people under all circumstances this fci the food corporation of india through the public distribution system is collecting the grains from the farmers by introducing msp and also introducing issue price procuring the grains storing at the food corporation and uh, then distributing to the fair price shops to the needy people at a free of cost or at an affordable price so food grains production remained stagnant or fallen in five consecutive years the reasons uh, are land degradation land is de degrading reduction of water storage the water table is decreasing and inadequate storage and market facilities farmers have to be trained they should be provided with loans for this and investment in the green revolution high yielding variety of seeds fertilizers etc and farmers should be able to bargain for the prices which are favorable for them they should not be at loss and a higher supply and lower demand that is people want more quality food so directly the farm farmer should be able to take his production go to the market meet the people and make his sales then only he can be achieving his goal not at a loss but getting remuneration for his hard work so in the 19th century when the european traders came to india indian spices were exported and even today many of the products from india 
they compelled our indian producers indian peasants to cultivate indigo and that led to the result of champaran movement gandhi ji in 1917 the indigo or the coloring substance which was introduced so now under the globalization taking indian products to the international level especially after the globalization lpg liberalization privatization and globalization introduced by sri p v narsimha rao uh, and taking the indian products to international level the farmers have been exposed to new challenges they are competing with the global market by producing rice cotton rubber tea coffee jute spices and many other agricultural products many countries in the world are trying to buy the indian products and if the if the government is subsidizing by providing basic amenities then the indian farmers will be at a profit they will be having a big support apart from this the agriculture can be more successful and more profitable by giving a just new push or thrust to the farmers small farmers marginal farmers by introducing a new revolution which is called as gene revolution which introduces genetic engineering into farming in fact organic farming is much in prevalence or vogue today because it is practiced without a factory made chemicals such as fertilizers pesticides etc hence it does not affect environment in a negative way environment will be safeguarded ozone layer will be safeguarded so indian farmers have a bleak future their future is not very bright so we need to support them we need to give them lot of assistance small farmers marginal farmers for them the support is required by the government and they should be encouraged to cultivate not only the food crops but uh, but also cereals pulses etc which are of high value and uh, this will reduce the environmental degradation and also the land will be safeguarded so india's uh, diverse climatic conditions can be harnessed can be tapped in a wide variety wide range of wide high value crops equally distributed in all parts of the country so that brings an end to our chapter part 2 in the words of george washington he said i would rather be on my farm than be emperor of the world so being committed to the land which gave us birth doing some service to our land that is the greatest thing which we can do to our land so all of us let us come take a pledge that one year of our life at least we will do farming after retirement at least you do farming okay children thank you so much